But let's get to a, a big time sign in our division. The first division, I believe, uh, we talked about on here, the AFC South. Obviously, very familiar with that, um, being former Colts. That's the Titans, the Colts, the Jags, and the Texans. Mm -hmm. And um, D Hop, back in the AFC South, uh, we knew his signing, Dalvin Cook signing, is probably, you know, a week or so away. But we knew this was coming kind of around training camp. Uh, he talked about what he was looking for in his next squad. He said he was looking for a quarterback that loved the game. He said he was looking for stable leadership yeah. in the front office. Um, I forgot what his third thing was, but we know it's about the money. Yeah. And business about the money, especially at this point in his career. Uh, now, if history repeats itself, this is where a lot of great Hall of Fame receivers where their career kind of goes and they go off into the abyss but we'll see if that happens with d hop signed with the tennessee titans on a two-year 26 million dollar deal uh up, could be up to 32 million with incentives what were your first thoughts when you saw this come across assuming you saw this come across your uh twitter timeline um my first thoughts was that eh. but then you know once you see once you kind of take a step back and you kind of look at the dynamic and how the team is structured, mm -hmm. um, I think it actually could be, you know, pretty good on for 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 a couple people, right? Obviously, D Hop. Um, mm -hmm. Then you talk about Derrick Henry. You talk about the run game, um, and when you play against that offense, your main concern is stopping that run. So you can yeah. put guys in the box. So now, when you have a number one receiver like D Hop outside. You know, you, you have to do some different things as far as defensively um, to make sure you either got a safety over top of D-hop so you're not going to be able to stack the box like you normally would. And then also, you know, for the quarterback position, you know, Tannehill, mm -hmm. you know, you have a number one that you can you can go to. You traded your number – well, you know, you sent your number one, um, A.J. Brown, to Philadelphia. I saw a lot of people talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so, y'all might as well just resign the young boy AJ if you was gonna go out and pay thirteen a year to D Hop. But facts. But but again, you know, um, I know Tannehill is happy for this sign. I know Derek Henry is um happy for this sign. And you got Coach Mike Vrabel, who's a great coach. Um, yep. so again, and then you got a you got a good defense. You got a good solid defense. Um, you know, um, on the other side, you got Rand Carthorn coming in, first year GM with the Tennessee Titans. So mm -hmm. again, man, I'm, I think I think it could work. I still have that Jacksonville Jaguars team though um, at the top of the AFC South. And now a lot of people on the Jaguars bandwagon at this point, and um, you were on them last year going in, going into the season. You're like, hey, this may be that team that makes that kind of Cincinnati Bengal ish turnaround. Uh, some people were in in or out with Trevor Lawrence after the debacle with Urban Meyer at, at the head coach. Doug Peterson comes in, turn it around. They make a playoff run, get a playoff win. Yeah. Um, you know, they've only gotten better this offseason, too, with Calvin Ridley. They just re-signed uh, Evan Ingram, which the next guy we're going to talk about. But, yeah, I kind of had the same feeling uh, when I first saw this signing. Like, eh, you know, I, I would, I would like to I would have liked to see him. I guess go to a, what I feel at least is a contender. A lot yeah. of people always write off the, the Titans. Um, but like you said, Mike Vrabel is a, is a great coach. They do fight. They show up every Sunday. It's going to be a battle uh, regardless of uh, – I remember they had Malik Willis out there last game, last season for one game, and they barely were getting first downs. Mm -hmm. and I think still make, took the Chiefs, I think, um, to overtime. So they're going to fight. They're going to be ready to play. They're going to be a physical ball club. Uh, and like you said – this does help Derrick Henry out. Him seeing eight, nine-man boxes week in, week out. Help the young kid, Traylon Burks, out, too, who yeah. came on strong towards the end of the year at receiver. Um, and now you would expect uh, D-Hop to get more attention. Is he going to be getting double teamed? Is, he, is the safety leaning to him? Probably not at this point in his career. Um, I don't think better. I don't think Lee, not not with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. That's the, you know that's the problem when you got it when you are a receiver, you got to be dependent on that quarterback position. And look at here, you throw that. You, we, we you think Ryan Tannehill starts win the starting job number one, or keeps his starting job? Should I say? I think I think he will. I think he will be season as a starter. I think he will be. He was. He will be there week one. I Ryan Tannehill so. will be. I okay. think Ryan Tannehill will be there week one. 
Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, we've had this conversation before. I think, you know, if if the team is struggling middle of the season, I think we will see Will Levis. I think we will see him um, come in and take it over, taking over that starting position. But week one, Tannehill will be their starting quarterback. And if we look at D-Hop didn't play the first, what, how many games was that last? Six? Uh, yeah, I think it was six. First six games last year, man, and he ended that season still almost a thousand yards. He still has that playmaking ability. Mm-hmm. He still has that playmaking ability. So again, <laughs> as much as we say about Tannehill, D Hop can make him look great. You know what I'm saying? As far he's as he's done it before. I know, some... I, I know D Hop is down there. I'm gonna throw it up mm-hmm. and I'm gonna see if if the best man wins. And hopefully he has a Titans helmet on. So again. Yeah. That could, this, this could spark a lot of confidence in Tannehill. We could see a totally different quarterback than what we've seen in the past. Could be wishful thinking, but I still think D-Hop garners that, that attention from defenses. Okay, I think I think it barely moved the, the odds on, on the FanDuel Sportsbook, our presenter, our presenting sponsor of the Man to Man pod. I think it barely moved the Tennessee Titans Super Bowl odds once he got, uh, once this signing um happen but it's gonna be interesting to see man things always look good or bad we always have our opinion on paper in, in july and august but once some real games get to going um in september uh we shall see and this is i expect it to be a competitive division obviously jacksonville right. won it last year i think the colts got better um i think texans for sure got better now when yeah. we see the, the those fruits we see those trees bear fruits this year Maybe, maybe not. They definitely got better. A lot of important positions, uh, including the head coaching position with D'Amico Ryan coming in there. And then obviously the Jacksonville Jaguars. Who else? Who's the other team I'm leaving out? No, you said it. Sure, you said Jacksonville, Indy, the Titans. Okay, there we go. The yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a competitive division. We still see. And Tannehill's the old head in that division. He's the veteran at the quarterback position. So they should be in good shape. Um, 